I was why I gotta tell you this story. I came out of Best Buy and there was a black girl there taking with her clipboard wanting my signature on the California whatever, equal rights and blah blah blah. And I thought, oh I'm not getting into that. And I walked away and the Lord said to me, go back. So I turned around and went back. I said, Tell me about your what do you what do you need signatures for? She said, Well we're 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 trying to make equal rights for all people. I said, Oh that's really good. I said, so how does that work? And I said, so like if, if let's say I was a pastor and I had, a, a, I, I wanted to teach and, and I had somebody coming into my church teaching something totally opposite, how would that defend my rights? Well, we went right away to the issues of California, which is, you know, she said, well, I'm a lesbian and I love my girlfriend. I would never snuggle up to a man. And I said, honey, you're not functioning in your design of this. Oh, well, I could never snuggle up to a man. I said, you suffered a wound somewhere. I said, I don't know where it is. I had just studied this that morning. I said, I don't know where your wound is. I said, but you're not functioning in your design and purpose. I said, do you know how many generations are in you? Do you know that maybe God has something coming from your womb that'll never happen if you don't fulfill that? It's a God-given thing that's supposed to be coming from you, and you're being ripped off. And she started to cry. And I started to cry. And I put my hand on her chest, total stranger. And I said, God loves you, honey. He loves you so much. I said, this isn't about right or wrong or whatever. I said, your God loves you. He wants you to function like you were meant to function when you were created. And she goes, well, my father raped me when I was little. And I went, there's the room. There it is. If you don't ask the right questions, you don't get to the wound in the heart. People were made certain ways. And then the, the surrounding, what happens to that person and in their heart will affect their thinking and will affect what comes out of their mouth and what they put their hand to do. So my job as a Christian is to love them. Love them. Don't confront them with what they're doing. Oh my gosh, if people had confronted me with what I was doing when I became a Christian, I would have run. We're not to go up to the world today, beat them over the head, tell them they're wrong, you know, this, that. In Hebrew thinking, it's not me and you. It's not us and them. In the Hebrew mindset, it's the we the family. It's about family. It's about we. It's not about us against them. Satan knows how to divide and conquer. He did it in the garden with words. He got him confused. Did God really say that? Oh, he didn't do that. Well, you're getting ripped off. You didn't get, you, God's lying to you. You should have eaten from that tree. So he comes in with words and he divides them. And then they start blaming one another. Isn't that what's, what's new? Nothing's new. We're doing it. But remember the other tree? The other tree. Oh. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. But look at the fruit of the human heart from Romans 1, 28. This is what will be going on in what Jesus said are the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, arrogant and boastful, abusive, Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, no self-control, brutal, godless, treacherous, heartless, senseless, faithless, they suppress the truth, having an appearance of holiness, it's all about form, deny its power, which is function. Function loves. Function does not hate as a Christian. But we are to speak truth in love. And that should never change. I love this billboard. Church of God, Monday night, Alcoholics Anonymous, Tuesday, eating spouses, Wednesday, eating disorders, Thursday, teen suicide, Friday, say no to drugs, and the message is America's joyous future. <laughs> I think we all feel we're kind of living in an upside down world, don't we? And things have changed since our parents were here. In just this three and four generations, it has changed. 
since dad was around. Your dad, your mom. It's a different world. Even the secular world understands it. They're feeling it. They're having movies on Armageddon and Last Days, and now we got a movie upside down. I say to my husband, these three things have nosedived in our country. All you have to do is turn on your TV. And I'm like, no, no. Where's modesty? Where's manners? Where's morals? They've fallen in the street. They can't get up. I found this interesting. Remember when we used to write on the skin of trees love messages? I love so-and-so, and it was all hearts and everything. I think there's a whole culture that are writing messages on their skin. And I think they're trying to say something about who they are by writing messages on their flesh. It says something about me. It says what I represent. It says what I want to say, but I can't, so I'm just going to write it, and then everybody will see it and read it. Isn't it crazy how that's become such a... Uh, a hip thing now, especially in California. The women, before it was just Navy guys with the, you know, mom, but now it's like young girls, young guys. I mean, it's not that it's bad. It's like, what is the message and where is the culture? They're writing messages. Here's some of the messages. We accept the love we think we deserve. So whatever my society is telling me about me, that's the love I'm going to accept. How about I've seen love die? No price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself. How about this one? Life is pain. Learn to enjoy it. Learn to enjoy it. And now we got 50 shades of gray. What was once a beautiful act between a man and a woman now is portrayed as something degrading and painful. Love is turned upside down. But the struggle is not what you think it is. It's not the Republicans against the Democrats. It's not the gays against the non-gays. It's not the culture against the religious people. It's not, you know, it's not any of that. There are unseen forces, seeds, hidden that are pulling against the tree. And those unseen forces, eventually, there's a tipping point, and it falls. And I think this is what's going on in our country. I think there are unseen forces that are going on. We were sharing stories tonight. You may not think this is real. Come talk to me after, and I'll tell you some of my medical experiences with the unseen forces. Mm -hmm. People on ventilators and deep comas, as soon as you say the name Jesus, sit straight up, open their eyes, and snarl at you. Have you ever seen that, Leanne? <laughs> children. <laughs> no. But the, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Yes. Yeah. And children. Okay, but anyway, it's a spiritual battle we're in, folks. It's not about people. It's a spiritual battle. And Jesus told us that that's where the battle would be. It would be in an unseen world. He said, you don't battle flesh and blood. You battle against principalities and power. I like this one. How do you know if it's counterfeit? It'll say in God we trust. <laughs> they want God out of everything, don't they? I laughed the other day. I was at the checkout. And the checker goes, hachoo! And I go, and the guy behind me goes, bless you. I go, oh my gosh, they're taking God even out of the sneezes now. I said, God bless you. And, and she goes, oh, thank you. But it's true, they don't want anything. Our culture doesn't want to do away with him because he limits us. No, a good daddy doesn't limit you, he protects you. He loves you. Limits are good. The Bible says all scriptures, God breathed, profitable for teaching and training and rebuking and correcting in righteousness. If you're a parent and you love your kids, imagine this represents maximum love. You teach and train your kids. This represents maximum discipline. I rebuke and I correct my kids, don't I? So when I have equal love and equal discipline 
boundaries, I have a secure child. If I have all discipline in an unloving parent, I'm going to be the rebel. So I wasn't loved. It just was all about rules. Religion, same way. All about rules, but no love. You're going to have rebellious people. You have all love and no discipline. You have that bratty child, the spoiled child. And it's also going to be a bratty adult. It's going to be one who's spoiled, who's spoiled and wants their own way and stomps their feet and gets mad. I know adults like that. I know adults in every one of these. And then you have the child with no love and no discipline. And that child is just spinning out there. He, he has no clue what he's supposed to do. He makes his own reality and he makes his own laws. And we see those kids all over the streets of San Diego. Um, it, it's sad. But this is what's really going on. And people say, oh, you know, we're just to love everybody. I said, would a parent do that? No, you'd have a bunch of spoiled, bratty kids. A parent, if you love, you rebuke and correct in love. If somebody wants to be guided and matured, you have an, a balance of both. That makes a secure people, a secure child, a secure nation. You could take this thing, this grid, and lay it over every area in our culture, and you will see spoiled nations, rebellious nations, secure nations. It, it really works. It, it's to me, it's what's really happening. Some people are saying, oh no, it's the end of times. I don't follow that because I'm trying to be somebody who's talking about end times all the time. But Jesus did say, pay attention church, pay attention people. Mm -hmm. There will be signs and symptoms, just like a doctor or a nurse says, uh-oh, signs or symptoms, let's see, let's feel your pulse. No, that's irregular. Oh, that was way too slow. You know, so I get that as medical people, we read signs and symptoms. Wouldn't we do that? what's happening in our culture. Jesus looked at the religious people of his day and said, you hypocrites, you can tell the seasons, you can tell when it's going to rain by the sky, you can tell when the south wind blows that it's going to be a storm, but you can't know the signs of the times. And Jesus rebuked him because he loved him. And he wanted to make sure that they understood. Oh, aren't you glad you came to the reunion to hear all this negative stuff? No, I have good news. And by the way, that word in Hebrew, good news, is the same word for flesh. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's the good news. It's the same word for flesh. So when Jesus came in the flesh, they called him the good news. And that's where that came from. So the tree of life offers all the opposite things. All the good words of your Bible come from that seed. And that's the seed of the Messiah. Psalm 1 said, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of ungodly, but his delight is in the counsel of God. And in his counsel, he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. And his leaf shall never wither. And whatsoever he does will prosper. That's the abundant life that Jesus talked about. He said, you follow me and you will bear much fruit. Fruit that will remain. Mm -hmm. So the abundant life isn't money. The abundant life is functioning how God wants us to function, love how God wants us to love, not how the world wants us to love, but be true to whose seed you are. Whose seed do you represent?